Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I uh, am going to go over a few tips that I have picked up along the way in exactly how once you have a print made, uh, a final print that you're happy with, and you wanna get it in a mat up on a wall. I'm gonna go through um, a few ideas and like I said, tips that I've picked up just along the way um, from doing this. Now, when I was starting out uh, as a photographer, one of the first things I did to learn how to frame my pictures is I went and got a job in a professional frame shop. That has served me really well um, over the years as, you know, they basically paid to, or I basically got paid to learn how to properly frame my pictures. And at the same time, it was a pretty cool job. Um, we got to do lots of different artwork and, and things for people's homes and, and things like that. So I'm gonna share some stuff with you. And in this video, it's gonna be something I use on the computer to visualize how I want the image and the mat to actually be and to help figure and to help me figure out how to actually cut that mat into what size. So again, we're gonna go from, you know, just a regular print like this into something, you know, more of a finished, more of a finished print like this. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. This video is gonna be maybe the first of a few, and I'm gonna walk through and go over a bunch of different things as far as like mat cutting, um, different mounting options, and explaining you know the differences and maybe the pros and cons of different ways to do different things, the materials, and so on. But today we're just gonna start um, in Photoshop. So once you have your picture printed, what you want to do is measure what the trimmed size or what the image size is going to be. Now, I like to use, um, this might even be made for framing. I know we use them in the frame shop, but it's a see-through ruler. Um, so this one's really, you know, something like this is really nice to use. The other really nice one to use is like a cloth. Um, they make like retractable ones. Um, I use one for my bellows actually. It's a just a cloth tape measure for like clothing and things like that, because that's not really gonna do any damage to your print. But the see-through one's nice um, for framing as well. So you're gonna wanna measure um, your dimensions, because you, you're gonna need to know that going in um, to get everything set. So once you know that, the outer dimensions trimmed on this picture is going to be six by nine inches. So you're just gonna wanna know the dimensions of your final trimmed picture. So like I said, we're gonna jump in into Photoshop here. Now there probably is other ways to do that. Well, I know in fact there are other ways to do this. We, uh, in the frame shop, we use software. It was called, I think if my memory serves correctly, FullCal, FullCalc, something like that, which was very, very nice. You could just type in any dimensions and it would figure out your mats and the double mats and the sizes and everything. and Honestly, you get pretty spoiled when you have access to something like that. And then when you don't, you're like, I have to do math and blah, blah, blah. But it's very simple to figure this stuff out. So you don't need like super crazy software, but there probably are other programs out there. I'm sure that that will do the same thing. I've found this to be very beneficial and especially to kind of pre-visualize what I want before I start cutting in the mats because uh, the mats that I use now are unfortunately getting very expensive as well, so you don't want to waste anything. Okay, so this is the file I use for my 16 by 20. So the outer dimension is 16 by 20, and then I have a six by nine mockup and a seven by seven mockup. And the way that we do this by scale is, I'll just show you. We're gonna start a new one. So you're gonna go new file, and you want to keep this consistent. So I'm going to do a, a width of 16, a height of 20, and then the resolution 300. And that's key. You have to keep the resolution the same for everything. So 16 by 20 inches, 300 resolution, everything else just 8 bit RGB. You're not going to be necessarily printing off of these color profiles fine. And then you're just going to create that. Now, once you have that created, 
I'm going to use a, a seven by seven inch just for demonstration purposes um, to get this started because that's another one that I use over there. So if I have a seven by seven inch print and I want to mat it into a 16 by 20, um, like I said, this, this whole process is just going to help you see it and visualize it plus help you get the measurements and then you can kind of uh, draw it out for future reference. So I'm going to open another document and I'm going to go seven inches by seven inches and keep that 300. All right. So now what that did was it opened up a new file, but it made it a seven by seven inch at 300. And what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to take this foreground color and I'm just going to make this black um, and you'll see why in a second. But to do that, you're just going to hit the alt or option it alt or option delete button and that is going to take whatever foreground color is here and make it black so that by default if you hit the d key it's going to set the foreground to black and the background to white i believe and that way you can easily set that to black next thing i'm going to do just double click on this and that's going to open this little panel up i'm going to make it a new layer then i'm going to take the v key i'm going to hit the v key or select the pointer and just drag this while holding the shift key. And I'm going to drag it up to this tab. Now when I drop it, it's going to drop it right in the center of this document. And I want to do that because that's where I want to start. Now I'm going to move this up, but I'll show you. So I'm going to label this. We're going to go seven by seven inch print. There we go. And now because we made these both 300 DPI in the inches, um, you know, seven by seven, 16 by 20 inches, this is going to be to scale. Now, the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open up another one because what I like to do is put half inch borders um, on my edges. Now you could do quarter inch, half inch, one inch, you could really do whatever you want. And it kind of depends on how you're going to mount the image. Um, and we will uh, get to that in future videos. But for now, just to show you how this works, I'm going to open up a new document again. And then I want to go half inch. So I got to add an inch total, right? Half inch to each side. So we're going to go eight by eight at 300. Create that. This one I'm not going to change the color of. And I'm going to make it, make it into a layer so that I can drag it over there. So the same thing. And I'm going to hold down the shift key as well. And you might want to start renaming these as you can see at the top that's starting to be called untitled, untitled, untitled. Save the main template in a folder um, where you can find it and with your other templates. So I'm gonna drag this one over, hold the shift key as well. And now what that did in the layer palette, it put it right on top of the other one and it, it was white. So it just hid the other one. So I'm gonna drag it underneath. And this one I'm gonna call a uh, half inch border. Next, I'm going to make a, a what's called a stroke or line around this image. So I'm gonna, in the layer palette over here to the right, just double click on it. It's gonna open up this layer style box. Then you're gonna click down to stroke. Now the settings that I, you can, I mean, you could make a pink line if you want, it, it's not gonna matter. But to visualize it, just what I have done, and again, you could, you could make um, the stroke bigger if you want, but I have done a six pixel stroke and the color, uh, nine, 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 which is like a light gray. And then from there, you're going to hit okay. And I even lowered the opacity on this layer to make it a little bit lighter because it was a little bit intense for me. So that kind of just, it fades that uh, layer off a little bit. So now that's our half inch stroke. So I'm gonna take these two and put them in a folder. And I'm gonna call this uh, seven by seven inch print. And now that is basically I can, I can hide that one. So I can make a six by nine one, I can make a, a 10 by 10, or you know what, whatever I want to do in this mat from here. Now, if you like it centered, that's totally fine. I like to weight the bottom 
a little bit. And so what you can do is, well, in the US, if you're in the US or um, if you use inches, I would go into Photoshop and go under settings, rulers, units and rulers. You can set this to inches. That's going to set this top bar and this sidebar to inches. Um, you could send it to centimeters, you could, you know, millimeters, whatever you want to use, but whatever works best for you. So some places it's going to be uh, centimeters. Uh, for me, it happens to be inches. So then if you show, you can use these things called guides. So we're going to put a new guide on here. And I'm going to line it up with that. I'm going to line it up with that. And what this is going to allow you to do is see where you want. I mean, you can use the rulers basically to show you what your, your mat edges are going to be. So I can already see that right here from this is going to be four inches from 16 to 12. This is going to be zero, so four inches, four inches. And then the top one's six inches and the bottom one is six inches. But I don't want it centered perfectly. I actually want to just move it up about an inch. So if I select, so then I'm going to go ahead and just make another guide at five inches. Yep. And then I'm going to go view snap to guides. Make sure that's on. I'm going to um, select the folder and now I can drag all of that up and it'll just snap right up there. So now if I go view, then I can go to show. Uh, guides and it will hide those so it's a little bit more pleasant to look at but now I know that this top one was five inches this one was seven inches and I like the way that looks a little bit more some people waited even more I like just kind of subtle but you can do you can do what you want but this that's the uh, cool thing about this is you can see this before you start cutting into your mats to, to actually look at it and now if you want to go one step further for the background and you'll see why I do this uh, in a second, I'm going to put a stroke layer on this one as well. It's because I like to export these and put them into my good notes folder on my iPad and then uh, jart down the, the measurements. That way I have it and it's a little easier to, to carry around. So we're going to put an OK on that. And what that did was put a, a stroke on this outside um, border edge. The reason I do that is because in good notes, it's white on white. So it, it just it looks better if there's a little black edge. So you don't have to do that per se. But again, you can make this um, bigger or smaller if you need to. And then for that one, I just I made the color black to make it a little bit a little bit more bold. OK, then if you want to take this uh, again a step further, take your image if you've scanned it, um, whatever kind of picture you have of it. And I'm going to do this one here and you're just going to find it in, on your computer and just drag it over. Now, you want to size it so it's and if 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 that if you have that snap option on, it will usually kind of snap to this, but just size it over where you want it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to get it close. And if you hold the shift key down, that's going to keep up the, the proportions while you're doing this, while you're dragging and clicking. Then I'm going to hit return. Now I'm going to drag this over that black one and I'm going to put on what's called a clipping mask. So if I go in between these two and actually this is a smart object right now. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, rasterize that layer just to make the file size. There's no I don't need a smart object. Uh, but anyway, then I'm going to go between these two layers. And if you hold the alt button down, you'll see this little box with an arrow. And what that's called is it creates a clipping mask. So it clips this layer to this one. So now if I'm on this one, no matter where I, I go with that, it's only going to show where that black box underneath is. So that's really helpful just to keep things set to where you want them. Because if I just try and go in and size it, it, it gets a little bit like it gets a little tougher than, OK, I know like I, I can clip it to that mask and then adjust things. So that's just one little more tip for you. Uh, create a clipping mask. And that is pretty much, you know, pretty much what what I do um, for the most part. So then I save this um, actually before I put the picture and I usually save it just as my template. 
and I have a folder of them. I've got 11 by 14, 16 by 20, 20 by 30, you know, a lot of different like standard sizes. That way when I want to, um, you know, frame something or I want to frame something new, I don't have to reinvent the wheel every time I just open up this file and it's good to go. So from there, what I do is I go file, save a copy. What I like to do and have, have kind of been slacking and I'm gonna get caught up on it, is save these as well to where I am selling my pictures when I'm selling the matted. That way people can kind of see, okay, that's what it's, you know, they can envision like what the matted print is gonna look like too versus just the print. So you're gonna save it as a copy. I'm gonna save it as a JPEG. So if you save it as a, a copy, what that'll allow you to do is, is flatten it and save it as a JPEG. Um, it's kind of a newer thing in Photoshop, but it, it works out pretty pretty slick actually. Um, and then we're gonna do that. Uh, I will just go that one. And then I will size this down and save it for the web as well, like I said. But for that, I'm just gonna show you quickly then what I would do with this in on my iPad, which really isn't much other than to have a other than to have a document for it. So I'm just gonna airdrop this over. So from here, I'm going to use the app GoodNotes and I am simply going to go find the picture. I will copy it. Go back over to GoodNotes in my, I have a, a framing uh, folder, then just paste it. And now I have a visual aid. <laughs> as well so this is you can see this is why i put that black stroke on it so i could actually see the outside of the uh, mat because otherwise it kind of gets lost into the white so and then so again we had and then i usually just do the math in my head you could just rely on the photoshop rulers for sure but i like to have it kind of written out for i don't know my brain i guess and then, so this was the outside dimensions of the, for the, the inner dimensions for the mat were gonna be eight by eight. And then that basically makes a 12 and an eight. And then we know these two were the same. So it's four by four and then five by seven. So this one here is seven inches. So in here is five inches. This one's four and this one's four. And that my friends is how I visualize and set up before I go ahead and cut my mats using Photoshop and my notebook in, in uh, GoodNotes because then if I have a same, the same size print, I typically don't have to go in and do this unless I want like a mock-up for my website or something like that, but then I have that ready to go as well. So this has really been helpful for me as far as like planning and visualizing how I want my matted uh, pictures to look. So I really hope that was helpful for some of you. I know once you get a final print, it is really nice to be able to see it uh, matted and framed on a wall. So if you do want to follow along and see more content, uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, leave me a comment down below on what you're you know, if you're struggling with anything in the framing department, because I will be doing, like I said, a series of videos coming up, you know, from cutting your mats to, you know, just things I've picked up along the way uh, to do the job right. And I think I'll go all the way into actually putting them in a nice frame. And now let's get these pictures on your wall. See you next time.